Hello everyone and welcome pioneers to our midweek session. I am here with Kara Dawn, who's one of the pioneers here with us and um, I'm so excited because I just know that she has so much to offer us and to guide us and share what, what you've been discovering along the way. These midweek videos are really designed to get you involved. So if you do want to do a video in the group and share, you're always more than welcome to. Just reach out to me and we'll um, work on it. Cara Dawn is local here, so she decided to come over so that uh, we can do it together. So we're going to do it kind of like an interview. I like that. Yeah. So Cara Dawn is an amazing woman of God. She has... Um, I would say she's has a, a very strong prophetic gifting, if not a prophet. Um, she sees a lot and she really loves Jesus. Um, and I think that Caradon is a perfect example of how this journey is designed no matter where you are in your walk with God. Because you've been walking with God a lot. I know you're very close to him. But that doesn't mean that there's not more things to discover. Agreed. Right? Agreed. So... Um, before you I ask me. you a question, of course, before I ask you a question, do you have anything you want to say about yourself? Introduce yourself. Let people know a little bit about you. Well, if it's okay, can I say a quick prayer real quick? Um, Absolutely. Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for Andrea, just for this book, Lord, that she, this resource in which she put out there for others to follow and succeed in their journey to love in Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for the love that you have given us and that you continue to give us and the love that you've guided uh, us along the way that has guided us along the way. And I thank you for this opportunity to share your love with others. And amen. It's in your amen. name we pray. Amen. Thank you again. Amen, yes. Thank you. So yeah, um, I'm excited. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, any way you want to start, like questions, you know? Yeah. So um so obviously this week we've been talking about how kind of the God is, is right? Who is God? And we talked about the different aspects to the nature of God. When I wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, the book, I would say now the book, the contents in the book for me in my personal life is three years old. Oh, wow. Um, okay. It was a long journey to get the <laughs> book out. Um, but along the way... I've learned more about who God is, God. and in the teaching, the video teaching, yes. I, I've added yes. a little bit about who God is in addition to what's in the book. Yes. So, you know, you don't need the book to be on the journey, but no. it definitely helps enhance the experience because of some of the things I share. So, um, there are the, the aspects of the nature of God that I talk about. Yeah. What is the one that has really spoken to you or the journey? Because we've all been on a journey. The yeah. journey that you've been on to pursue God's love. What's the aspect of God that God's really been giving you revelation on? That's Thanks for that question. So actually, like you, Andrea, I've been having that, um, that same journey of love towards God and just understanding God's love and who he is. So I want to start with who God is. Um, to me, God is love. Um, when I operate and I speak and I'm my normal self in this day, in this world, um, I operate out of love because I believe I was truly created uh, by God, uh, for God, and that creation um, is intended to love him back because he created us in love. So with that being said, it's okay. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. With that being said, um, I'll start by saying that to me, um, knowing that God created me for his love um, and solely to be loved by him was probably the hardest revelation, the hardest uh, realization of being a human being um, because I'm so used to uh, doing and doing and, <laughs> and, and, and being active and and uh, being independent and being on my own. And because I was so used to that, I didn't really understand why, first and foremost, when I got saved, I didn't understand why God would love me when I was this horrible human being. Um, but that's just it is I didn't understand and I thought I was horrible. 
because I did not even concept have any concept of what love was. Um, and through my path of uh, understanding who God is, I found out that he is love and he created us for love. So with that being said, on this journey, I've learned that not only is he love and he created us for love, but that by that love, we will understand his love. Uh, mm -hmm. By him really pursuing us, because we pursue so many things in this world. We pursue jobs. We pursue people. Uh, we try to fill that void with so many things. And the things that we try to fulfill um, are leaving us empty. And they're not really satisfying that need. Um, and that need was that we were created for love, by love, so that we can love. And the love that God gives us, he in turn ask of us to give it back to him and to answer your question the purity of it the the simplicity <laughs> of it and that's exactly what it is it's very simple however we we didn't really understand that purity um because we're human beings and we have faults and flaws and try to like i said fulfill that need so I'll share a quick, quick little uh, testimony. Um, I had been saved several years, uh, and I got saved at 23 after being uh, homeless, jobless, and carless at 23 years old. Yeah. Um, and when I got saved, it was literally um, because somebody in my life that after I got a job, they were happy all the time. And I thought, <laughs> how is this person happy? Right. What could they be so happy about? And ironically, that's how I'm known, right? Like happy all the time. But the truth is, um, I didn't understand joy. I didn't understand happiness. I didn't understand even uh, what it meant to be cared for the right way. And so I got on my knees after you know, attempting to go to church and, and those things and hearing about God. And I got on my knees and I asked God to really just kind of like, give it a try. I said, I'm willing to give you a try uh, because I had tried everything. Right. I had tried different religions. I had tried uh, people. I had mm -hmm. tried sex. I had tried drugs. I had, I was in the world. And you I were was, trying to find love. I mean, really, that's really all it was. Feel fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, that's all it was. I was in the world trying to find love. And I didn't know that's what I was looking for. But when I sat down on my knees and I cried out and I said, Lord, I don't know what is going to happen, but at least I'm willing to give you a try. So let's see if it works. Thank God. Um, my whole life changed after that. He sent people in my life to love me. Mm -hmm. He sent people to really minister to me and teach me. And I would go to this church that was non-denominational and they had outlines on how to write things out. And I said, oh, I like this fill in the blank. I need oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need this fill in the blank. It's really helping me understand. But then I sat down and tried to read the word of God for myself. And the very first time, I could not really understand how to read the Bible. Right. So I said, you know what, God, I'm, I don't know if you're really real. And I've been giving this a try, but there's a scripture that I want to try. So will you lead me to a scripture mm -hmm. that will let me know that you're here and that I can know who you are? So the scripture said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, yes. I remember you talking about this. Oh, my goodness. When I read that scripture, I said, I just asked you to show me <laughs> something. Not that. Right. Um he was speaking to me directly because he knew that my biggest fear was that I was going to be homeless again. Mm -hmm. He knew my biggest fear, fear was that I was going to be alone again, that I was going to be um, heartbroken and despair right. and all this. So when he led me to that word, I realized that he really is speaking to us. We just have to listen. Right. Mm -hmm. And the word of God himself comes alive when we open it up. And we. And I love that. I love that. He spoke to you through the scriptures. He still speaks today. And there's times Absolutely. where he speaks to our hearts and it's not necessarily 
through scripture. Absolutely. But he still does speak to scripture. Yes. Through scripture to us. And it's powerful, like you said, when there's that life. Yes. It's it comes right like from the pages. Yeah. Yes. That's what happened when I read John 13. Yes. That's mm-hmm. awesome that you brought that up. So in 1 John 3.10, you talk mm-hmm. about it in your book. But when I talked about the pure things of God, I asked the Lord to even explain to me because we as humans like to complicate things and make them so difficult. (laughs) Um, And especially as women, right? We make things a little more. um, But I actually wanted to simplify and understand purity as at its fullest. And the Lord gave me 1 Corinthians 2.10. Do you have that scripture? Yes. And while Andrea is looking that up. I have many Bibles here. (laughs) Awesome. I have 1 Corinthians 2.10 we're going to read from. And then I'm also, while we're doing that, if you guys look at Zephaniah 3.13 through 17, that would be a good reference point for what I'm going to talk about. But, okay, what do you have there for 1 Corinthians 2.10? Okay, so I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation, but I have others if you want. So 2.10 says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. That's amazing to me. So as we know, salvation is a really pure form. However, we don't understand sometimes that with salvation comes the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, Without it, we're actually kind of um, handicapped. Mm-hmm. Um, like we talk about, we need our hands, right. To operate. We need the Holy spirit. Um, without the Holy spirit, we can't understand the fullness and Correct. the depth yeah. of God. So the Holy spirit makes everything come together. And that's the simple things that are the deep things. So when he actually does what the Holy spirit does, which is basically bring understanding and bring depth, the Holy Spirit is doing that so that we can understand. He's Mm -hmm. doing these things so we can understand. Um, If we were to have a normal conversation with somebody about uh, the weather or whatever, that's fine. But when we're talking about the knowledge and understanding of God, those things can appear to be complicated. The purity comes through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit himself is pure in his form. Mm -hmm. And so the form of the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So when we actually access the Holy Spirit and we realize that it's the Holy Spirit that speaks the word of God through us and for us and from us, then we can understand how simple the things of life are. The purity comes from understanding we can't process in our in our worldly mind, in our in our um, what I call practical mind, right? Okay. In our practical mind, we can't really understand the deep things of God mm-hmm. because we're we're thinking with a practical, right? Well, that applies only to you at this time and that day. No, mm-hmm. it, the Holy Spirit actually and the Word of God applies at all, all times. Yeah, all times. I, I couldn't help but um, think about, you know, worldly wisdom and how the things of God confuse the wisdom the, the wisdom of the world. And I think it's because it is so simple and so pure that it almost seems impossible that it could be from God. Yeah. And then I'm also reminded that Jesus said we must be like little children. Yes. Right. Why? Because children are so pure and innocent and they're not their thought process hasn't been complicated. Right. By um, logic, I would say. And I'm a very logical person, so I'm not against logic, but it's there's a there's a philosophical logic that can lead you down this rabbit hole that makes things too complicated. So that's thinking with our with our thoughts thoughts and our mind right Mm -hmm. like so instead of allowing God to do his work in our heart we process it up here in our brain and our thoughts and it gets mushy Mm -hmm. and um one of a good friend of ours Sandra she says sludge right so it's like (laughs) this sludge it's this yuckiness right so the only reason why we even have that sludge is because we are in a messy world things are messy Mm -hmm. in this world However, another thing that um, helped me understand this is when I got saved, 
I thought I was so wrong, right? Like I was like, I'm wrong doing this. I'm horrible oh, at this. Mm-hmm. I'm, do- but then I started to understand the simpler things of God, and started to understand His heart for us to be His child, like yes. not child faith less. So like when I say that is we want to be childlike, meaning we want to have a humble, willing, um, pure, pure, pure. Yes. Just pure, pure way of thinking of things. And it's so easy for us to want to get that sludge or that yuckiness in there. But really, if we just sit humbly and uh, search the things of God and, and seek him out, because that's what he asks us to do, just so that we can understand and know his intent for us in pure love, then we would see that it is through that love that we can actually access the simple things. Yes. It's through that mm-hmm. love that we are the simple things. Um, right. Because the right and the wrong don't really exist. Well, think- He's not looking at it like, you're wrong for doing this. You're wrong for right. doing that. We as humans say right and wrong. You're wrong. You know what that is? It's the tree of good and evil. That's it. When you eat of the tree of good and evil, you're constantly filtering everything from a right and wrong perspective. Yes. When you eat from the tree of life, yes, fulfilled. Things it's it's not that's that's, that's not how things are that's working. Yeah. There's no condemnation. Um, you know, it's not that there's nothing that needs to be sorted out or cleaned or yeah. it's not that we don't have to get out of the muck, but you're not looking at being in the muck as evil. Right. You're looking at it as I need to get to purity. Yes. I need to get cleaned up. But we already have that purity within us. So this is something that God has shown me through this scripture in 1 Corinthians 2.10 when we search the deep things of God, we really are just searching God's heart. Yes. Um, the Holy Spirit um, leads us and guides us in that path. And it's purity, p- pureness of God is His the heart of God. Mm-hmm. So He wants us to have that heart. Yes. That's the he heart. He wants us to seek those deep things of yes, God. Yes, absolutely. Because that's what changes our lives. So let's talk about, I want to talk about one more thing. Um, You talked about, do we generally believe that God loves us? Hmm. That's a really good question because so many of us with that complicated mindset and trying to to, to messy things in our life, um, we tend to not really understand the concept of love. So I started asking God, why is it that I don't really... I can love others because I know that you love me, but I don't know how you love me or why you love me. So I started to ask him that. Okay. I said, why is it that you love me and how is it that you can love me when I'm just this, there's so many other human beings, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> when I realized that it's as simple as he took the time out to form us. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to take that time out, right? right? You talk about in the scripture, he breathed his life. So I'm walking around with the breath of God inside me. There have been moments when God has even said, I'm changing and shifting your DNA, Caradon. Yeah. I am changing the part of you that you understood is your mother and father. You're now my child. So not only was I adopted, but I'm truly his child. Right. Not adopted. Grafted in. Yes. Grafted yes. in. And I to saw the DNA line. changing shape and taking yes. form. It's I saw amazing. it. Just in my own life, I could physically see it. So what I want to say is this: not only does does God love us with this authentic, true love, but He wants us to understand that love to its fullest. So. I shared this with um, Mike earlier Mm -hmm. about um, I was a Christian and saved, but yet still dealt with depression, but kept it in a place that was hidden to Mm -hmm. where the enemy knew when to use it against me. And that was when I found out I couldn't have a child. Mm -hmm. And the enemy knew that that was going to get me because he knew my heart to be a mother, because I have a heart to be a nurturer. Discouragement, yeah. Right. So he knew what to use. So it wasn't until I was hit head on on the interstate and walked out of the car accident with that being the fourth fourth attempt um the fourth near-death experience Mm -hmm. i now had four near-death experiences 
here I was fighting and battling to live and not really understanding why. And now I understand it's God's love that causes us to have life. And not only does he have, we have life, mm-hmm. but life more abundantly. Yes. And the life more abundantly comes when we understand that he just wants us to live. He'll do the rest. Right. Yeah. And that's the part that really got me the most about the genuine love. He wants us to really just understand. Um, my question to him when I went through a, um, a healing process was, why can't I let you love me? What and is it and can I just pause yeah. there for a second? Because, and I, I, I believe I mentioned this in the book where it, we we grow up with God loves you, Jesus loves you. It's such a cliche saying in our circle. We hear it. But often when I ask someone that question, do you really believe that God loves you? Yeah. There's that pause. Yeah. That deep, deep. Uh, I don't know. Do I? Right. And it's, and it's a good place to be because now you're realizing, wait a second, I may not believe it. And then you can work on it. But even more than knowing, receiving that love, accepting that love, because for example, let me use my relationship with Mike. Mike, you know, Mike and I were friends before we started dating and you know there was a mutual respect and we, we were Honor. like best yeah. friends yeah. before we had a lot in common all that stuff so i always felt it but when it came to when when the moment came where it was starting to become more i had about two weeks where it was like oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my, oh my goodness i was very nervous and i learned from past experience so i went and sought counsel and all that stuff But when I told Mike, expressed to him, because he had expressed to me his feelings, Mm -hmm. but when he did, I did not, it's not, I didn't accept it. That's the reality. I kind of was still like, I had the wall up and I was so scared and I was like, I don't know if I can. So I didn't say, I did not say anything, but that moment where I um, expressed my feelings in a way that allowed that was saying, I accept your love, yes. was filled with tears and shaking where one would have thought, are you sure you want to do this right <laughs> now? But it's because the love that I was feeling started casting out the fear. Absolutely. And my body was physically responding because I had lived in fear yes. my whole life. So accepting it, That's it is what changes it. Knowing it Yes. Is a start. Yes. But then accepting it and yes. letting him love you then yes. takes it a step further. The forgiveness that you give yourself um, uh, helps you process that because that's what he showed me. He said, oh, yeah, that's good. you know, I could forgive. I can love. I can be and operate and allow him to, you know, God to use me and be the love of God to others. But I myself couldn't even forgive myself. I couldn't even love myself. Isn't it harder? It's way harder because you, you're, I mean, you know, me, I'm an independent person, been on my own since I was 17. Yeah. So I always thought, well, if I'm not hard on me or if I don't, you know, do it a certain way and, you know, a little OCD, unfortunately, yeah. but what it really came down you to You just was, like to, to live in excellence. I do. That's what it is. You I have do to, have a high standard. I see I see you know. those things now, especially after the women's retreat and looking at the example of the diamond and yes. having a conversation with my daughter, which she'll be on my podcast soon, um, looking at it and saying, okay, God made me a certain way. Yeah. There's the negative way and then there's a positive way. So doing things in excellence is the positive side of perfectionism. Yes. I feel like, right? Would it you is. Say? We do. That's where we complicate things. So, <laughs> um, because it's really not that complicated. That also is a great um, intersection here. But I do want to finish with this aspect. When I did finally get to that journey of asking God why I could not receive his love, he showed me it was because I actually not only didn't forgive myself, but I still had a little bit of unforgiveness. And it was a generational... Towards yourself? Actually, it was towards someone else. And Hmm. I didn't even know. I thought I had fully forgiven and fully walked in freedom from um, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was actually something that that had came in as a child. 
It was a a generational curse. It was something that came in as a child. And I didn't even know that I had unforgiveness towards um, someone who still is in my life. And through that unforgiveness, through, you know, asking God to not only help me forgive them, but saying, I hope they understand and feel that forgiveness. Um, Through that, I actually, you know, had reconnected with them. And we were able to walk in love. And they didn't even know that I had unforgiveness. Yes. They didn't even know that I had been carrying that around. It I didn't know. It wasn't because tripping it was something... them up. No. Notice this. It was tripping you yes. up. And that's why forgiveness is always about us yes. and our hearts. So important. And I didn't, you know, because I walk around in, in almost in a ecstatic, joyful way about how much I love others. But the truth was, is that when you carry on forgiveness, it really hurts you more than it does anyone yeah. else. And God wants to love us through that unforgiveness because really that's what's keeping us from him. That's the, what's separating us from his love and receiving mm-hmm. the love he has for us. So I want to talk about, you said God is a just God. Yes. So Zephaniah three thirteen through 17 I want to go ahead and read that scripture, and then I'll wrap it up with this. Um, go ahead. Yeah, 313. So I would recommend, I read this because Caradon led me here, and I thought it was great. I would recommend reading the entire chapter 3, so Zephaniah 3, so that you could get the full context of what's happening. And I'd encourage you to look at it. Thinking about Jesus and what Jesus came to do and what God accomplished through the life of Jesus. So uh, 13 through 17? Yeah, let's do that real quick. So the remnant of Israel will do no wrong and tell no lies, nor will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths, for they will feed and lie down with no one to make them tremble. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You will fear disaster no more. In that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Can you imagine that God just rests right there? He rests right there in our love, Mm -hmm. like in the love that he instilled in us because he wiped away everything that would cause us to fear. Yes. Everything. So when I read this, like she said, I would read the whole chapter, um, especially three, um, this is what I got. God is justice and love. So the simplest things, right? One of the reasons why I was so hard on myself is because I thought I'm being judged, mm-hmm. right? Like I thought God is judging me. He's looking at me thinking what a wretched person I was. He's punishing you. Yes. Yes. That's I thought, how I grew <laughs> That's what I thought for the longest time. And even as a Christian, I believed that I, I have to do it this way or this way because if not, God will not take kindly Uh, But this is what he showed me. Justice is rescue from the world of human evil and violence. That is what justice is. God is a just God because he wants to rescue us. He wants to save us. Mm -hmm. So his salvation alone should have been enough. But we can't see that. It talked about it before his salvation in the word of God. Yes. He talked about how the one to come was going to be the one to set us free. That freedom, freedom Mm -hmm. is where we live. He not only rescued us from this world, but in order to rescue us, he wants to restore us so that we can create a world where everyone can flourish in safety and peace. Oh, I love that. Can you repeat that, please? Sure. He, God wants to restore us. So that we can create a world where everyone can flourish in safety and peace. Beautiful. Amen. Justice and love are the future of hope. So the hope is really in the just God and the God that loves. That's where the hope lies. I love that. I love that. Um, As I mentioned in the book, as we close, um, 
I, when I was working on the women's retreat and preparing that message about who God is, God started to reveal more aspects of him. And one of that is, um, you can see that in the 30 minute teaching where I talk about how God is judge or yes. you say God is justice or yes. however it is that you want to say it. When I started to explore that, because I had that little like, uh, I don't like that, you know, because I saw God as he's punishing those right. who are doing wrong. And then I learned that in Hebraic thought, justice is bringing, it's it's restoring. Yes. It's restoring it's in essence. Restoration, so if yes. something has been robbed or stolen or yes. broken or killed, there is a restoration that comes. It's not to punish those who did wrong. It's to make right yes. for those who lost yes. something. Um, and it's it's a it, it almost sounds like, but isn't it the same thing? It's not the same thing. No, it's because not. the intention behind, and we're going to talk about intentions next week. Yeah. The intention behind the action is different it's love one is based on love yeah and one is based on fear i yes. need so ba let's talk about the fear if it's fear based you're punishing someone yes to so that they stop doing what you don't want them to do right you're Which fearing feeling more feel right fear. you're you're it's trying stealing. to stop them because you don't want them to do it again so you're going to punish them and hope that the punishment changes them when in fact it creates when more fear it does it <laughs> creates fear and when we read first john 4 right yeah. it says that the fear is of punishment but when it's motivated by love you're looking to reconcile restore make right what was wronged so sometimes it may result in what looks like punishment yeah. but that's not the focus the focus is you've been wronged yeah. and God wants to make it right for you. Yes. And it may be that someone needs to be punished or something needs to be punished, but that's not the heart behind. The heart is you've been wronged and I need to make it right Absolutely. for Absolutely. And that's the love of God. Yes. Because what he wants to do in that is restore us back to him. Yep. His first, he's our first love. So again, we talked about this and I'll just wrap this all up with this. So when God created us, he could have breathed life into to more animals than he could humans. Right. He could have an earth full of animals and we're the humans who are animals. I mean, there's so many ways he could have gone about this. But when I think about the fact that he took so much time that not of one of us has the same fingerprint, not one of us has the same brain. I mean, yes, our brain workings are the same. However, if you look at the brain. The mind, yes, and the mind is very different. I'm learning exactly. that from Dr. Leaf. Yeah. And so what you can see inside the, your brain is this is definitely Caradon's genetic makeup. This is how mm -hmm. I designed her to be. This is Andrea. Um, there are so many other things. The teeth, I mean, that how that's how you determine who Caradon is, right? right? Yeah. So there's so many ways. And I learned all this because when I started to really seek out his love, the biggest part that got to me was that it all encompassed. He could have created and done anything, but he created us because he wants us to understand that when we're here, it is for his purpose, his design, and his love. So that then in turn, when we give it back to him, all it does is love, the love glorifies God through us, in us. So we're now living and loving the way Christ does. Yep. It all makes sense. And reflecting way. him. Because you know, we're we, walking around God like didn't God's just, love is just God beaming. didn't just breathe life into man. He formed, formed. man. Amazing. He designed he and the a woman. Yes. He took the time. He, you know, we, again, simple things of life. He, we could have rushed it we could have we would have rushed it because we are that way however god took his time he not only formed us but he did it in such a way that we knew it was his design yeah it's beautiful so caradon i want to thank you for, thank you for me. taking the time out of your day today yeah. to come here and just share with all of us 
um, I'll pray to sure. lead us off. So, uh, Father, I just want to thank you for who you are and for revealing yourself in so many ways because you said that nature speaks of who you are. And we have the added benefit of having scripture speak of who you are. And I just pray that as humans made in your likeness and image that we may reflect you so well that people can know who you are simply because we're reflecting you well. It is not of us, but it's of you. May your love pour into us and may it overwhelm us and may it change us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, you have a wonderful rest of your week. We will be meeting tomorrow at, um, what time did I say? 7 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, and I'll send you guys a link so that you have it. We'll be using Microsoft Teams. Um, all you have to do is click on the link. You should be able to get in. So uh, we will see you then. Yep. Karen will be there too. Bye, Bye guys.